Hello everybody, it's Nick here with Nick Tolman Music and today we are going to continue our beginner guitar lesson series using Hal Leonard's Guitar Method, Book One. Let's get started. So we're back and today we're going to go ahead and look at page 20 here in the Hal Leonard uh, Guitar Method Book 1. And in this lesson we are going to learn a new concept which is ties and we're going to talk about that here in just a minute. We're also going to learn two new songs. One is Amazing Grace and the other one is an exercise called Riffin which I don't think is an actual uh, song, it's just an exercise in this book that uh, is kind of dealing with syncopation and incorporating ties, which we'll learn today. Let's go ahead and start off by talking about ties. Now, a tie is a really simple concept, but can also kind of throw you for a loop a little bit if you're not used to doing it, all right? So a tie is a tool that we use to connect notes together to have maybe atypical lengths of notes. And it's used for various reasons, and we'll kind of talk about some of the reasons why a tie might exist. But essentially all that's gonna happen is if you have a half note, which is two beats, and a half note, which is two beats, and you tie those two notes together, you essentially have four beats, right? Same as a whole note. Now, so why would you use that instead of a whole note, okay? So the most common situation that you're gonna see a tie is when you want the value of that note to extend across the bar line, right? So if you have a whole note that's gonna take up full four beats in four, four time, that whole note would have to start on beat one and take up the whole measure, right? You can't start the whole note on beat two or beat three. That doesn't make sense because now your measure has too many beats in it. Right, so that's why we would use a tie. Okay, you could have a half note that starts on beat three, uses up the rest of the beats in that measure, but it's tied to a half note in a new measure, and still you have a note that ended up being four beats long. Okay, now that's the reasoning behind it. That might sound super confusing to you. If it does, it's okay. The reasoning why doesn't matter that much. It's more. Uh, the concept, making sure that you understand how to do it. So let's go and take a look at exercise 42. The first situation we have is a whole note, which is equal to four beats, and then we have that tied across the bar line to a quarter note, right? So essentially we have now a note that is worth five beats rather than the four beats and the one beat together, all right? And then we have a quarter note in the next measure, and then we have a half note tied to a half note, just like the example I was given a second ago. So a half note, which is two beats, tied to another half note. Now that whole thing, that whole tie together is worth four beats. And then we have a quarter note, and then we have a quarter note tied to a quarter note, which a quarter note is one beat, tied to another quarter note, which is one beat, it's worth two beats, all right? Really pretty simple concept, you just have to make sure that you're counting through these, okay? So let's go ahead and give this a try. This is uh, exercise 42. This is uh, at 72 on the metronome. And here's what it will sound like. One, two, ready and play. Two, three, four, five. So on that one, you'll notice that I counted each figure with how long, how many beats it actually was. Now that can actually be kind of confusing to count that way. Let me show you another way you can count it to kind of keep track of the measures and where you're at. So here we go. We're gonna try that again. One, two, ready and play. One, two, three, four, one. Three, four, one, two, Four, one, two, three, four, off, right? 
So all I did that time is I was following the beats that are written below the exercise. This is a good way to do it to keep track of where you're at in the music. Because sometimes when you have odd values of notes, like five beats long or whatever, you might kind of get off a little bit. So it's important to keep track of where we're at in the measure. All right, so some what I like to do oftentimes in that case is instead of counting like that first tie, instead of counting one, two, three, four, five, in my head I'd be counting one, two, three, four, one, because I know that that last beat of that figure is on beat one of that next measure. Okay, all right, let's try that one more time at 72. I'm not going to count very loudly this time so you can just see how it sounds here we go one two ready and play and that's all there is to it let's try it faster here is 120 on the metronome Exercise 42 ties. One, two, one, two, ready, and one, two, three, four, one. All right, so that really, that exercise 42 is all about just helping you understand how ties work. So don't stress too much about it. You're gonna see those ties go into action in these next two uh, exercises. So let's go ahead and take a look at exercise 43. This is Amazing Grace, all right? So we have three things essentially that we're gonna be focusing on on this. We have the melody, we have the chords, and we have the lyrics or the singing, which obviously is an optional part. If you're wanting to learn how to sing and play at the same time, this book is great for that because it gives you a lot of simple songs and melodies that you can sing along to. But if you have no interest in singing, then don't worry about it, all right? Okay, so here we go. Let's start out with the melody. This is exercise 43, Amazing Grace. We're starting at uh, 72 on the metronome. We probably won't go too much faster than this just due to this song. It's, uh, it's about where we generally would play this song anyway. So here is 72. Go one, two, three, one, and two. There we go. So that's the melody. Okay, so let's talk about it a little bit. There's a few things to be watching out for in this melody that might hang you up a little bit. The first is the ties, okay? And that's a brand new concept, but these ties shouldn't be too challenging for you. Again, I recommend counting them the way that it's kind of outlined in the book. It has the numbers underneath, okay? So if we're looking at that second line, we have that first tie. It's a dotted half note, which is equal to three beats tied to a half note, which is equal to two beats. So it's a five beat figure, right? So instead of counting one, two, three, four, five, which you can, I would encourage counting one, two, three, one, two, right? That's gonna naturally kick you into that note coming out of there and help you keep track of where you're at in the music, okay? So let's look at it from the beginning. The other thing that's gonna potentially cause problems with you on this exercise is that there's a lot of skips between strings, right? Right at the very beginning, you have three notes in a row that are on three different strings. So take some time to make sure that you're feeling comfortable with your right hand. Okay, making sure that you're feeling comfortable with where those strings are at. So let's just kind of walk through this a little bit. Right at the beginning, we start out uh, with a pickup note. One and two. All right, 
right? To me, that's kind of like the first phrase or maybe the first chunk that you might focus on is just basically the first line, okay? And again, it's not too challenging. Really, the most challenging part of it is those skips. So take it as slow as you need to. Again, we're not going to take this song faster today, but if you need to go slower, please feel free to do so. Okay, so moving into the second line, again, we have a pickup into it. Second line. One, two, three, one, two. Again, some more skips. And into the third line. Okay, so when you play through this, you'll notice that in, in songs that we've done before, there's been a lot of repetition, right? You'd have like maybe a figure, a two measure kind of figure that repeats itself a lot. This song, that doesn't happen too much, but there are some things that you can watch out for that are repetitive. First off, you'll notice that the rhythm for this whole song is almost always half note, quarter, half note, quarter, right? It's a very consistent rhythmic pattern. So you don't have to worry too much about funny rhythms that are gonna throw you, throw you for a loop. It's just a real consistent kind of rhythm. The other thing is, you'll notice that you're basically almost always just using your second finger. There are a couple times that you're gonna use your third finger for that high D. Other than that, everything else when you use a finger is either gonna be your A or your E here all right so that's something to be aware of too like oh hey i'm i'm really only kind of doing open strings and second finger being aware of that might help you to not stress about your other fingers or whatever is happening with those okay all right so let's go ahead and try it with the chords now i'm gonna go ahead and play the chords and i'll play that melody on top so you can hear what those sound like together here we go one two And that's the chords. As you're learning the chords for this one, you'll recognize we're just using G, C, and D7. All right? So it'll just be those three chords. We're in three, four times. So I'm doing a strumming pattern like this. I'm hitting the bass note of the chord, so the bottom note of the chord, and then strumming. You can do that, or you can just strum straight quarter notes. Right, that's also an option. I'm just kind of showing you maybe another way that you can uh, make it a little bit more interesting while still keeping it pretty basic. Pretty straightforward. All right, so let's talk about the singing. Again, your process for learning to sing this would be to start with singing along with the melody. So if the metronome is on here, we can start here. There's our first note. Uh, one, two, three, one, and two. Amazing grace, how sweet the Saved a wretch 
like me. I once was lost, but now am found. Was blind, but now I see. All right. That's the best way to start when you're trying to put this all together. Once you're feeling really comfortable with that, the next step is going to be to try to add that singing to the chords, all right? So again, our first note is here. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound, right? And we're gonna play that with the chords. One and two, amazing. And there you have it. Okay, this is a great one to practice your singing and playing together. It's a really common song. Most people know the melody. It, uh, it flows really well. The chords aren't too difficult. So spend some time working on it and uh, it should be great. I'm sure you'll enjoy it when you get it down. All right, so let's take a look at this last exercise. This is riffing. We're gonna go ahead and start with the metronome at 72. We will bump this one up here in a little bit. So we've got melody here at 72. One, two, three, four, one, two, three. There we go. All right, so that one is uh, it's pretty slow for this, and that's great. If you need to go slower, that's totally fine. Please do. Really, the thing about this one is kind of feeling that groove, okay? And it's all about that tie that happens in um, at, on beat four of several of the measures, right? <laughs> right that's kind of what i'm feeling there and and that's kind of what we're shooting for you're not feeling it as much at this slow tempo it's more just getting the notes down okay so let's talk about some of the technical things that might throw you okay the biggest thing is this skip with your third finger from the f this mid-range f up to your d okay you're skipping a string and you have one open D in between, right? So at the very beginning we have. All right, if you're having trouble with that, if you keep going, kind of going and kind of flubbing because you have to make that skip, what I would do is isolate those three notes, just F. Do that as many times as you need to until you're feeling really comfortable with that skip, okay? One. Right? And then it happens kind of again there, right? 
okay? Same thing, so we're in the second measure, in the second beat, we have D, C, F, F right? And it's kind of the opposite of that skip that we did right at the beginning, right? So again, just isolate it. And then it moves into that same thing we did before, okay? So again, isolate, isolate, isolate. Starting on the second beat of the second measure, I would play those like five notes right in a row. D, C, F. D, D, right? And do that as many times as you need to. Okay, yeah, so that's all, it's all about isolating those little skips and getting as comfortable with them as you can. Just repeat, repeat, repeat until your fingers are just automatically doing what they need to do. Okay, so now moving on into the second line. For me, I'm just going to leave that top F down. And then we're back to the groove again. And then the third line. Good. Yeah, I mean, I, I would say that 80% of this song is just getting that little groove figure at the beginning down. Right? And as soon as you have that really happening, the little other parts that happen in here are pretty easy. N nothing too fancy, okay? So let's go ahead and jump this up to about 120 on the metronome. We're actually gonna go up a little faster. We're gonna go to about 140, 144. Yeah, this is where the groove is. Here we go. Let's try this. One, two, one, two, three. All right, so let's go and try it with the chords, and uh, and that'll be it for today. So here we go. Um, again, so you'll notice that these chords are, uh, they're grayed out, so these are just teacher chords. If you want to learn them yourself, by all means, look ahead and see if you can figure out how to play a couple of these chords. Uh, really, it's just the A7, which we haven't learned yet. But uh, yeah, be my guest. Here we go. So here is the chords for you to play along with. One, two, and one, two, three. All right, so that's everything in for our lesson today. Thank you so much for tuning in. As always, Please uh, check out my website at www.nicktolmanmusic.com. You can find extra exercises and resources to help you out along your journey of learning to play guitar. And uh, stay tuned for our next lesson. Thanks.